not prepared. So <laughs> the only thing that can come to my mind right now is a mantra. And uh, this is something that um, in, back home, we, we tell the shloka before starting anything or anything. It's just like a tribute to Lord Ganesha. So this is a tribute for you to start this new journey of yours. take up one of my three minutes. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. Don't take a photo of this, I'm just serving the internet. Is it like performance? Is this... Yeah, this is all part of it. So, um, this is actually something that I wrote myself. Um, I'm constantly annoying Tash and um, my work partner with the fact that whenever I look at my watch or whenever I look at my, uh, my Mac to see what the time is, it's always either 2.22 or 3.33 or 11.11. You're getting the kind of a pattern that's emerging here. So um, one day when I was particularly bored, I wrote this little short story, more of a musing on the theme. So I'm going to read it for you now. Hey! It's happening more and more often. Right now, it's 12.23. One minute ago, I looked at the little digital clock in the corner of my screen and wondered again why it was all the twos. It's not just the twos, sometimes 3.33 p.m., 5.55, whatever, but it happens at least a couple of times a day. What's the significance of 11, 11 a.m.? There are those who would argue that it's just a memorable set of numbers and that I look at my watch many more times during the day, forgetting those other occasions, because 12.34 p.m. just isn't as memorable. 4.23 p.m. doesn't have the same mystical ring to it. <laughs> I think that those people are the same unimaginative individuals who, if they were characters in a movie, they would be the ones who don't believe what they're being told about strange creatures landing in the town square, only to be impaled from behind moments later, ah. perishing horribly with the kind of look in their eyes that says, you were right all along. There's got to be something more to it than repeat coincidence. Would you like to start? One word. Once upon a time, <laughs> a, a time there happened a, a big crime. The 
person who killed <laughs> the didn't mean to hurt anyone. Okay. For your business words. I know it sounds a bit out there. Please bear with me for a few lines. I promise I have a point. How your brain works is how your business works. I am not going to talk about neuroscience or any form of psychological ideas. What I love to talk about is how we as women run and approach our life and the life of our family is exactly the same way we will run and approach our own business. At least the first business or enterprise we start. I did it, my friend Natasha did it. <coughs> I meet women every day who do it. It is absolutely normal and that is the reason why I need to talk about it. We are on our way to the sisterhood of superwomen and I don't want to be a superwoman. And I hope we don't want to be super ruined either. It's not much fun me. At some point in the past, we learned that we need to be strong, capable, independent, loving, caring, fine and savvy women, mothers, daughters, girlfriends, everything at the same time, every day. And that is what we do. We just do it, get on with it, and worry about us later. Each of you does it her way, very unique, very efficiently, and prides herself on how many lists she can remember. Here's my point. How your brain works is how your business needs to work. It's the same brain. And because it's the same brain, it works. It's really, it's kind of magic. I knew that I have a passion about processes and systems, and I thrive in the detail in that. I also know that I love my big picture thinking, and that I don't do well with follow through. That's why I never send people birthday cards. I think about it, I buy them, and then I don't send them. Same Christmas. Because I know so very well how my own brain works, I can now make my business work. I have set up reality check cards with a friend. We speak to each other every day at five. He makes sure I follow through on my promises. To make a team, I found the perfect business partner, Natasha. She's detailed where I'm not, and big picture where I can't step back. It works beautifully for both of us. And two also means you have somebody whom you can ask for help. Can you remember when you asked somebody close to you for help without feeling obliged, guilty, lazy or helpless? Isn't it funny how asking for help makes us feel helpless? My biggest learning through the past two years was that I am allowed to ask for help. I'm a woman and I can ask for help. People who love me love to help me. They listen, they read, spend time, brainstorm and support me. This brings me to an interesting thought about money. Women ask people they love for money. It is about our social connection and empowerment based on the emotion and trust that we build our businesses. All our businesses can grow, be as big as we want them to be, be sellable and successful. Embrace your passion and your courage. Own your processes. Make them work in your favor and document them so whoever comes in to help can get into it quick and easy. Keep on talking about your vision, why you love what you do. Think business bigger than you and enjoy the planning. Because you know how your brain works, you can make your business work for you in your life. This is what I wrote. And I did music.